This is basically introducing the 350XL from the Testo that's based in Germany. This instrument is used for stack gas testing. It's a semi-continuous unit. So basically that means that it runs semi-continuously in that it, it can do an overnight run, but then it's got rinse cycles cycled during the measurement. And basically this one is also used in optimization efficiency of boilers, furnaces and burners in the industry for process engineers for example so it's not just for flue gas analysis and basically the total of six sensors can go into this instrument including oxygen, nitrogen, monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide and hydrocarbons such as methane, propane and butane. All the sensors are electrochemical except for carbon dioxide which is infrared. The main one is the analyzer box and the control unit is the small one that's up here. To detach the control unit, just press the slide down on the bottom left and lift the control unit up. It can operate separately as a separate unit to measure humidity and differential pressure. And to put it back on, just make sure the groove on the back of the unit sits on the, on the slides on the actual analyzer box and to fit the actual actual control unit onto that groove at the back and make sure you hear the click. The analyzer box contains the LED lights up the top to show you whether it's mains operation or whether it's using the rechargeable battery, whether there's any error, it will go, it will blink. If there's an error, it will blink red. And also, the analyzer box has the filters for the flue gas filters. It will discolor when it needs replacing. And this is for dilution. Basically, we have a condenser trap over here to trap out any water that goes from the flue gas and to do a proper, proper emptying of the condensation trap just horizontally take out the condensate tra trap and from here let the, drain the water out inside the analyzer box there is a cooling system so any moisture will will come out into the condensate trap and on the condensate trap there are levels when the water level reaches the mark it has to be emptied but during the emptying the analyzer box has to be switched off here on the control unit the RS232 cable socket is there the data bus and the flue gas probe and the differential pressure on the analyzer box the mains unit power plug is there the data bus the air rinse, the trigger for the alarm, and this is the ambient temperature for temperature to probe. This is the flue gas probe socket, and here is where the differential pressure socket is, as well as where the flue gas would go into from there. The back is where the sensors are. Basically, we have the carbon dioxide infrared sensor, the the white one is the oxygen sensor and the black parts are just the heating elements to keep the sensor at a certain optimal temperature. The tubes are ABB design tubes, they are patented Testo designs. The black one is the nitrogen dioxide, the red one is the carbon monoxide with hydrogen compensation, the green one is the sulfur dioxide and the orange one is the nitrogen monoxide and on this side of the unit we have the air rinse inlet the air from the environment goes into there and it comes out for the two outlets there one and two this is the standard probe the at the end of the probe is where the thermal couple is which sits inside the circular cylinder you can see at the top and just make sure that's not bent or touching the thermal couple, the actual probe shaft when you're using it. This is the probe handle and the probe handle has the connections for the probe shaft and, 
and gas tubes and thermocouple line. And this is the connector for the gas tube. Basically, the gas, blue gas would go through the red socket here. The blue socket also is here for actual differential pressure for a pitot tube if one wants to measure the differential pressure as well. And this is the thermocouple socket. Before starting the analyzer, it's better to put in the socket and put the actual probe onto the instrument so that it can de be detected. And the thermocouple. The initiation screen was displayed and the data bus is scanned for connected system components. It's undergoing zeroing at the moment. Just to go through the LED lights, the top LED light here, the, if it's green and steady then it's the mains operation, if it's green and flashing then it's rechargeable battery operation is fully charged and if it's red and flashing it means the rechargeable battery operation is actually low and if it's off then battery recharging instrument is switched off. For LED light 2 number 2 here, if it's green and steady it means that it's in measurement mode. If it's green and flashing, it means that it's fresh air and zeroing. And if it's red and flashing, it means that there's an error. So you'd have to go to the diagnostic and see what's wrong with the instrument. And for the third LED light here, if it's green and flashing, it means that the recharging battery is going for a rap rapid charge. If it's green and steady, then it means that the battery is fully charged. I'll go for the display unit. On the display here, you see on the top right hand corner is actually the page number. It says 01 slash 08, which means that it's on page 1, which is the actual screen which shows the parameters of what you're measuring. So at the moment it's got six parameters that's showing, including oxygen, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, nitrogen monoxide, NOx and sulfur dioxide. To go through each of the screen, one just have to press down, arrow down, to the next screen again, and it shows the ambient temperature. The pump flow rate, carbon dioxide, oxygen reference numbers. So there's just six screen of parameters. The second box on the top right hand side is just the box number and the box location, the name of the box and also on the left hand side on the top it will show you what's happening if you're doing a measurement there will be icons to show you that it's running and doing a measurement program. The, the actual measurement to do a spot measurement one has to use the control function which is the bottom panel functions on the bottom here. It shows you four function keys. Basically to control those function keys, one just have to use these buttons, the blue buttons on the control instrument. And to scroll through and see what function parameters are available, there's the left and right key. So before you could see the print, diagnostic, air, no program. If you scroll through the function, there's the pump start, zeroing, line feed for the printer, to run a spot measurement, just press the function key below the P start, which is pump start. So right now, on the top left hand side, it's blinking black and white, which means that it's running the flue gas sampling. Flue gas is going through and it's doing the measurement. To stop it, just press P stop, which means pump stop. And if you want to save it, you just press memory on the function, but sometimes it just shows, it just lists the functions that you're using. If you want to get more functions on the screen, you press the configuration button, which is the book icon, and immediately press the blue button, and it'll show you the list of functions available. If you want to put a particular function like mem for memory, you just scroll down to the 
scroll down the list to men and press OK. So right now I've put the function mem on the, to the display screen and I'll click on it using the blue button and it'll save the data. When the pump stops, the values freeze on the screen and to actually print it out, you go line feed to get the paper running up from the control unit and then to print, just scroll to the print function and you'll start printing. How to configure the instrument? The book icon is the configuration icon. So once you press it, the, the configuration icon comes up. Basically there's memory, sensors, input, device and service. Memory, if you want to just press OK, there is four functions from memory which is read out, program, delete memory and it'll show you free memory as well. To read any existing memory on the system, you just press OK to, to read memory and the dates of the actual recording of when the measurement was taken will show on the screen and to press OK on one of them it will show you the list of the parameters that were taken at that time and to get out of this function just press escape from the from the function panel like I said the functions will be listed down here if you want to if you don't see it just scroll left and right to the actual function and again exit there's a program if you want to do a program on the instrument so that it can be run using specific settings like measuring rate and the time of the measurement for example. Measurement program, the four program once I pressed OK, these four programs here, press OK into measuring measurement for program one. Basically there's there's five options here. I'll go through them. There's the start, which means you can choose how it starts, either manually or by date and time setting. There's mean, which means that you can either choose the data to be collected as a, as a set, which comes out as a mean, or whether you get each data points individually. And you just click yes or no. Measuring rate pump is the rate at which the samples are taken. For example, here if I put 9 seconds, then the a sample will be taken every 9 seconds. After I click on 9, I press N to actually save it. And there's also the option of end, how the measurements are ended, either if the memory is full or the number of values that it measures or through date and time setting. So if I click on memory full, then it will take as many measurements until it reaches maximum capacity. The gas time is actually how long the sampling time is for. It's in minutes, so if I press 2 minutes and press N, then it will save it for a 2 minute sampling time. And the rinse time, if I press current, it will show you what's been currently set, which is at the moment 5 minutes. If I press end, it will just store it as that setting. So, and then once you've put in every parameter for the programming, for the program 1, then it lists out what, what settings you have put onto the program 1 on the display screen. And you just press OK. The settings are saved and now there's a star next to program 1 which means that the settings are in place. And again you can go through program 2, program 3 and program 4. Basically in sensors, one can, one can calibrate sensors for carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, nitrogen monoxide and oxygen. If I press sensors, OK, there's the recalibrate option there, print. There's the sensor status, which shows you when it was last calibrated. If one wants to calibrate the sensor, just press OK to recal, choose the sensor, press OK, enter the test co gas concentration, press N to accept value, and to save the nominal or actual value without calibrating the, 
the sensor, just press MEM or OK to calibrate. A test gas check can be carried out to check the recalibration. And there is also the option in sensor to check sensor status as well. OK, I'll just go through things to watch out for. Basically, the flue gas probe, one has to put into the duct where, whereby the tip of the probe would be sitting at the centre of the flow of the duct. So it would be sitting exactly in the middle of the diameter of the duct. And there are different probe lengths for different size of ducts as well. And basically with the probe, one has to make sure that pressure cap is there. If it's not there, if it's not seated there, then, then obviously there will be a leak to the system. And also one thing to watch out for, for before switching on the measuring system is to check that all system components are properly connected, like the connector and also to check that all the necessary probes and sensors are connected and also the power supply of all system components is guaranteed. With flue gas measurement, it's, it can be used for diesel engines but not petrol engines. It's not recommended for petrol engines. And also with the instrument, things to watch out for include the fact that it's got pumps in there, free pumps and a penalty gas system which sits inside the instrument and it doesn't like water. So any liquid that gets soaked into the instrument will actually cause it to malfunction. And if the moisture content is greater than 35% then this instrument will require the external drying gas system which will half the moisture content before it runs through the system.